Hey, 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 it is Freedom to Rock Friday. Here we are. Myself, Big Daddy T. We got Vinny G coming in right now. We're going to bring him in. The lovely Joe Madden and the lovely Nicole Pierce, both from our neighbors up north in YYC, Canada. Here comes my other Italian buddy with glasses on. Let me get up. He's out again. I don't know. He's got a bad internet <laughs> connection. But you know what it is, guys? Um, obviously, it's Freedom to Rock Friday, 5 p.m., Every Friday, uh, we no longer have the third Italian. He got uh, dumped off on the boat, so uh, he's in Ellis Island somewhere. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but we'll talk about the uh, situations that we're going to go in life. Um, one of the things uh, we mentioned is uh, taking advantage of people. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to bring a little spin on that. We're going to try to get Vinny back in here, but towards the idea of the Internet side, we are all on lockdown out here. In California, we um, normally, Vinny and I, we do our show. We're side by side. I give them a little elbow. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, we can't do it anymore. Um, Vinny sat there and had a good point. You know, us being outside, we could have probably tried to do it, but we might have had some stares and people throwing or yelling at us. And you know what? We don't want to cause any disturbance, um, especially here in the 6 4 district. So we hopefully we'll get Vinny back in. Nicole, how are you? Very well, thank you. Enjoying uh, our lovely Friday. Happy Friday to everybody. Happy Friday. Joe, how are you? Incredible. It's Friday. It's my favorite day of the week because I get to spend it with you guys. You know what? <laughs> it, is a, it is a true, true blessing um, to do this show every Friday with you guys and our counterpart. Hey, here he comes again. He's going to try to come in. We're going to see if he's got that. it. Let's see, let's see if we got him. Hold on. Yay! Wait, wait, we kind of see him, the rock star, there he is, Vinny, can you hear us? I don't know if you, I don't know if I hear him or not, but he's there, can you hear us, Vinny? <laughs> All right, well, we'll we're going to play along with Vinny, he's playing, he's playing rock star today. Vinny, I hope you're doing well, I hope we can get you in, you're on mute, so um, I'm going to unmute you, see if I can unmute you. I can't do it, you have to do it yourself, Vinny, so... I think he's having issues with the, the technical side. It, it's bad, guys. I mean, there's a lot of kids out here that, that are doing the Zoom. Um, everybody's on a network. There's certain areas, like on your blocks, that the high-speed network shut down. So if we happen to lose you guys, you know what happens. That's what that's part of uh, being um, technology right now and with everybody being at home. So let's bring up some subjects uh, that we want to talk about. Vinny says he's having some sound issues. He's sending on that. He said, Vinny, don't worry, man. You can still come over. He said, I asked him to invite him over to Sarducci's house. He goes, no, I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> I would be scared, too. We nah, you know what? Last week. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. He, he, his bark is worse than his bite. But, you know, it's old-fashioned time. What are you going to do? It's um, one of those things. There, there's uh, there's David right, Andrews. David. What? What a true uh, blessing, David. We will talk this weekend. David, we truly appreciate you following all the followers out there and listeners um, to Stables Media. Um, guys, without you guys, we wouldn't have the, the media company. We wouldn't have uh, the shows. We wouldn't have the following and the numbers that go with it. So thank you. We truly appreciate it. At Lisa Diaz also saying hi. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, Lisa. V Vinny, I hope you come on, buddy. We miss you. So let's talk about things. We have, you know, in issues in life sometimes, there's um, people get taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I always sit there and kind of laugh at it because um, people don't realize that uh, you burn a bridge, that bridge can't be uh, built again um, yeah. unless you have a hell of a, a, a team to rebuild it. And usually once you burn that team, they're not going to come back. So. I want to say hi to Glenn, because Glenn is part of our team. Glenn, we love you, brother. You know what? By the way, guys, I got to do this shout out. Glenn is having um, a couple dear friends of mine from the 6 4 from his old band, The Outrage. Um, his name, I call him Rob Raverson. He goes by Fred's Wrecker um, out of Germany. And then um, Chris Marsteller uh, is coming on. And I want to give them kudos. They're going to go live on Sunday. I believe it is 2 o'clock Mountain Time or Pacific Time. So, Glenn, if you can give me that information, I'll sit there and pass it on. 
But uh, these guys are a true, true um, legend. They, they've been in bands um, across the world and uh, great, great, great people. Um, there's there's uh, David say tell him oh, I will say how to my dad he'll like that and we've got Rick we, we've got Rick here we got a lot of guys joining look at Rick, Hi, all Rick. Things. <laughs> I love it love it thank Joe. you for being my new Facebook friend I appreciate <laughs> it hopefully you're friends with the right me there's a couple <laughs> me's out there right now <laughs> and Ben said at two two p.m. Uh, standard time um uh he's gonna have it's gonna be the Sunday spin, I call it spin to record with uh, NG, and they have a great, great show, guys, and that's part of the Table Media Network also, um, and then he also does a great show with uh, Art. Nicole, I think that you get on that show with him, and, and you and Joe, you guys really love that. They do a great art show. Um, one of our friends that's an artist out here, she's a painter. Unbelievable. Um, oh, I so need it, her to commission a painting for me. I'm going to send you the picture. Yeah, I need yeah. that done. Hey, Glenn, you heard it, buddy. We'll sit there and send you some. And by the way, Rick did play softball for our old Harley's team, and they were pretty good. They used to come in, and no matter if they lost or won, they drank a lot. So we, we were happy about that. That's always hey, a fun one. I appreciate that. Hey, guys, speaking of drinking, and we'll get back to that question that I kind of steered off here because Glenn the captain does that. But we uh, we have any uh, cocktails there? Are we doing any? Glass Vino? of red wine. You know, and you look like you have what eggnog? Looks like I hot know, chocolate. I have, I have white claw, white claw <laughs> tea, but I, I, I gotta know, ask you. Cups. I gotta what? ask you about white claw. I always, I almost went and bought some. Is it? I mean, because I like seltzer water. I, mean, I really do. I love seltzer water. But is it really? I mean, a good one to sit there and drink. Vinny G is trying to get back on. I don't know if I can hear him. Vinny. I can, can hear, hear you. you. Can you hear me? Oh, we got Vinny. Hey, Vinny. Hey, Vinny. Ah, Vinny. Hey, Vinny. Sorry, guys. Totally you, forgot Vinny. about that that hum that we get from the phone up here, man. My apologies from the studios, but better late than never. Thank you, guys. Hey, Vinny, we got you covered, brother. That's what the family does. That's what friends do. We sit there and have each other's backs. Speaking of backs, you get stabbed in the back. What do you guys do? How's that feel? How does that? Um, what do you, how do you go about um, taking care of that? I mean, some people laugh it off. I laugh it off, and then uh, I always say, um, "I don't try to do revenge." Because you know what? My mom always taught me this: is that uh, you hold um, grudges. It, it it takes out it, it it takes space in your heart for love, and that's better to do that. So sometimes my mom used to always say, "You pray for the people," but not everybody here. Um, in the world is religious, so um, it happens. I'm going to go to Joe first, and we'll spin this out. There's a question. If you guys want to answer, you can. If you don't, you can sit there and, uh, as we did last week, defer the answer. <laughs> but I will sit there and always answer the question because I like doing it. And you know I will too, and even though I shouldn't sometimes. So <laughs> I used to avoid um, saying anything. I would not say anything to save my life. I've now got to the point that it eats me up inside. So the last time someone stabbed me in the back, I called them on it immediately. And that was just today. So yeah, wow. So as soon as it happens, it happens. And you're gonna be called out on it because I'm not I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not pussyfooting around an issue that really you should come out and you should just say what you're doing and be honest with people. Cause if you're dishonest with people, they they're still gonna they're not gonna be upset with you, but stab them in the back and yeah that's that's all I gotta say. Well, you know I'm gonna just I'm, I'm gonna give my two cents on every answer here. You know me, I'm Italian. I like to talk. So yeah. um, one thing that you're absolutely right. I think sometimes my mom, being a cancer, um, born in July. She had a tendency, and obviously living with my father for so many years, he sometimes kind of looked the other way, um, but she had a tendency of holding things in. Yeah. And, but she always taught me, even though you hold them in, you, it's, you just, you got to let it go, you know, and she used to say in Italian, pace, which means peace. And it, it's better to be peaceful than to obviously argue. But sometimes, you know, people confuse kindness um for you know 
stupidity, I guess, or for um, lack of words of um, generosity. And, and you can't do that because you take advantage of someone. In the end, it will be um, the last time you do that. Now, and and I, give, I give a lot of chances. There's no what I say. I give a lot of rope for someone to choke themselves. And when I say choke himself, please, guys, I'm not saying that we go out there literally to figure out what it's figure speech. It's, it, in business, you have to do that because you have an employee that comes in late. Yeah. You can't fire him the first time. Nicole, we're going to go to you here in a second. You give him chances. But I've had excuses where I've been employees that said they lost their grandparents or their grandmother died five times. I said, I didn't know you had five grandmothers. I mean, so how many times does someone lie to you before you get to the point where you sit there and say, hey, enough is enough? Nicole, let me ask you that question. Um, well, I think pretty similar to, to you, Tony. And um, I'm like your, your mother. I like typically hold things in. But you know what? I learned a lot over the last well, probably three to five years um, and made some choices about what is or is not important. If, you know, I somebody lies or steals, it's sort of the two things that are the big no-nos in my world, lying and stealing. Don't really, doesn't fly, doesn't fly in my, with my kids. It's the two things that will get them uh, grounded and beat pretty fast. So yeah. I would own whatever it is you want to say. Um, if they choose not to, and I feel like, you know what, you're not valuable in my life any longer, or, you know what? It's not worth my time and energy. They just get cut, cut. They get shipped out of Facebook, out of my world, out of my life, and um, and that's that's that. Okay, you know what? And that brings up a good point. I'm going to put a video on this because obviously it's Freedom to Rock Friday. Right now, what we're doing, we're talking about what's going on in life in general with people. A lot of people are going through a lot of tough times, not only emotionally, physically, mentally, financially. But when someone takes advantage of someone during the time. When people are down, does that make it even worse, Vinny? I don't think it makes it any worse. I don't think it makes it any more or less forgivable either. But I think the hardest part overcoming is is the lack of faith that you lose in that person and the self-doubt you have. You know, how could I have done this? How could I have been like this? And you have a tendency to put yourself down. And I think that's the last thing you ever want to do because that makes a person in the end cold-hearted. Yeah. It's not what the world needs. You know, Sorry, I'm gonna very, good to take it. very good point. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read something that I got from our dear friend. <laughs> well, thank you. And I love and I love this because I, I do have this on my phone too. Is and it states never mistake silence for ignorance, calmness for acceptance, or kindness for weakness. That is absolutely true. Now, one thing a lot of people do in life, and you come across them. And it happens. You know, sometimes people have a tendency um, to want to sit there and be part of something. And, you know, they want to be liked. They want to sit there and, and, and um, be part of a group. But remember one thing, and I always tell this to my kids. You, you don't follow. Lead. Because your friends will come with you. And the true friends like us, like Nicole and, and Joe, you guys, you know, Vinny and I, and, and now that we have become a and, and David and a lot of these people, Glenn, and, you know, 40 years plus, your friendship stays there. And you know what? You might have disagreements. You might have um, misunderstandings. And you may even have sometimes you might even say a fib or a white lie, as we call it, just so you don't hurt someone. But if you're honest with them afterwards and say, hey, this is why I did it, and you're for up front, then at least, you know what? You can understand it. It's just when people try to make excuse after excuse after excuse and they try to do something, to me, that's just showing to me that, that you don't really care about what I think. You don't care what anybody else thinks. But you just basically care about what you think and you want to save your own ass. So that being said, Vinny, I agree with you 100%. Nicole, that, that saying is gold without saying that. I think if people kind of use that more, in the mindset, especially now. And I'm not saying that, you know, when this pandemic stops, that we, we, we should all go back to being, you know, you know, selfish. No, it's, it's I'm talking about being humble and understanding that everybody's going through a tough time and communication is number one. 
Yeah, and yeah. I'm not going to go into any analogies because I, I put a post on my thing is that when someone sits there and gives you a lot of analogies, um, they're usually trying to give you a, a lot of BS so you don't see the truth. It's almost like giving you a smoke screen so you don't see what's on the other side of the smoke. So that being said, guys, um, Vinny. Tony. You got, you got some big guys coming on Sunday, brother. What's going on? Tell us about that, man. Oh, oh, you heard, huh? Oh, yeah, man, I, I hear everything, Vinny. I, for some reason, everything comes through the corridor of the big daddy key. I don't know why. <laughs> well, because, yeah, everything has to be okayed by the commissioner, right? No, 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 no. No, no, no I got gotcha. you. No, but, yeah, no. thanks for asking, Tony. Very, very special Sunday spin, or as my paisano likes to call it, spin the record. We'll answer to that. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, a big legends of the six four end of the season holiday VIP kind of thing. The big band from Poway, our hometown, and the connections are there. We'll have Tony. We were talking about this. What 140, 150 years of indie rock experience right there. It's going to be special. I'm really excited because they're my blood brothers, and I uh, hope you guys show up and. Uh, don't be surprised if uh, we have another special guest. My my paisano is going to be on too. So. You know, I, I am going to be I, I have it written. That's why I asked Glenn. He was on here, and I said, "Glenn, is it four o'clock?" Or and he and he confirmed it's two o'clock Pacific, uh, Pacific Standard Time. Excuse me. So three o'clock uh, uh, Mountain Standard, and then uh, Fez, which I don't call him Fez Rob. He's all uh, in Germany, so that's I think it might be eight or nine hour difference now because I think the hour it might be eight hours. But, uh, yeah, you know what? These guys are, um, you know, you go to battle with them, and it's been nearly what? Glenn and I and you, 40 years, 30 years? Yeah, yeah back wow. in the Stone, Stone Ages, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, you walk, you know, yeah, yeah, Little House on the Prairie oh. after school, we'd all meet, you know, over at Tony's cabin, and we'd, we'd jam out some punk rock, right? Not much has changed. No how running about, water, no nothing, right? No, no. man, time was tough. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you some stories and we're gonna get David got some questions on here that we're gonna on there. But I'll give you some stories. Rob, we used to always go play at, at Rob Averson's house. Oh, not me. I didn't play, by the way. I wasn't a musician. I pretended to sing. My favorite band at the time, I think it still is the Doors. Um, so Which we need to sing tonight, by the way. Uh, you know what? I think. Hey, wait a minute. I just so you guys can see this. I did get a new little. He is yeah, going to sing Jolene for us tonight. 100%. Hello. I was actually gonna, I was actually going to have that on, but I can't. I still try to figure out all this technology and with all this BS happening in the world and, and lies and darts thrown at you. It's like be, it's like playing dodgeball. It's like holy cow! Like, and we just uh, just have fun and, and love each other, you know. I know. It all started at nine a.m. this morning, and I was like, "This is too much, too much." Wait, 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 wait. Joe. Now you brought this up, so I'm going to bring it. So she tells me like two hours later, she goes, Tony, I was waiting for you to get nice and nah, I was just enjoying seeing you ripping. And I'm like, she, you held your own. And that's what, you know what? If I have anything to ever teach my daughter. And I mean, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. When I see you guys, you, Nicole, Joe, Kayla, um, the ladies of, of the people that we've met and, and the girls that we know, many of the ladies that we know. Stand up for yourself. You might think it's tough. You might think, um, you know what, someone's going to judge you. But I'd rather see someone say something and let's go, whoa. And rather than them hide and turn around and not know what's going on. So I got to give you kudos. And I know, Nicole, you, same way with you. Um, Vinny, you know how I am. I, I just say it how it is. If you don't like it, there's a door. And 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 I'm not trying to say as an arrogant. Not, not in a hurtful way, Tony. Never. Yeah. You know? So that's the thing. You know, you have a tendency to say that. And it's very true. You are very matter of fact. But you're not a hurtful person. You're no. not an unkind person. You say no. the truth. You say what's on your mind. But you spin it positively. So you're only saying half the story when you say that. So when, when I, when I sit there. When, right. And I, and, and I will read it again. The people that know me, and then again, and you made a good point. Um, I always give everybody the, the respect and and the love because I don't know what they're going through. 
if they're going to sit there and belittle me or my friends or my family, when I say there's a door, I don't, I don't sit there and I, I kill them with kindness. I say, thank you. And we'll talk later. And maybe we might not talk later. You know, um, that, that's how it is. I just, it, to me, life is too short. And especially what we've all gone through. We've all had adversities. Um, we've all gone through some, and especially now, all your business, Vinny, you going through the business side of it, me, you know, and my wife and my kids, um, Joe, same thing on your end. It's who needs the extra bullshit? Pardon my French, and I think we're not uh, governed by the, what is it, the FA, the SEC or something? It's not the <laughs> FFA, that's Planes, by the way. Nice try. Yeah, I by the FAA. That's perfect. FCC, yeah. <laughs> hey, but see, this is why this is why I this miss is what my baby. legend now, you know? Yeah, <laughs> because is, he doesn't strip this stuff. He's amazing. He doesn't hey, need this, a writer. This is why I miss you my know, buddy. You next know to how me, easy it is for the last six months to play his goofy <laughs> side <laughs> game. <laughs> it, 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 normally, normally what I do, girls, I always look at Vinny, I go, Vinny, is it the, uh, and he goes, no, it's not that, and you guys don't really sit it on you, but now I can't do that, because if I'm looking, that'd be my dad, and, and it looks like you're looking dad. at me, and I don't know, don't ask me questions <laughs> on the spot, that never goes over well. <laughs> Oh, Nicole man. does not get the privilege of doing that. I'm like, I don't know. Why are you asking me on the spot? <laughs> he has to get used to life without me anyway for when he goes and makes his Hollywood movies, right? No, dude, I will not. Hey, you know what? We got some big things on Monday, guys. Um, I talked to, uh, and I, I mentioned this to Joe and and, and uh, Nicole. You, you weren't privy on this yet, but you will be now. But um, we've got someone that's coming to the network that's actually a uh, producer, movie producer. Um, and he has some big name stars to his uh, repertoire and his Rolodex, and he's gonna come on and, and you know what, be part of the network. He sees what we have, and he he knows um good things when he sees good things. So Glenn says, "Hey, David Andrews, there you go." And I'm like, David, you know what? David's gotta be guys. I'm gonna say this again. <sighs> David has done things for my family that um. You know what? Sometimes your own brothers and, and sisters don't do. So, David, thank you. Um, we hope your mom is doing well. You know, our, his mom had 89 years old, 89th birthday um, last week. And I know she's been having some health problems. So uh, we truly uh, love you. We bless you and, and hope that your mom is doing well. And then he says hi to Glenn. Oh. And you all oh, get hey, 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 who's this guy? I want to know who this guy is. 4-H, yeah. yeah. you right, it's the 4-H, wasn't that, the 4-H, Vinny, 4-H, is, like, is that the club that everybody was in, or was that where we all, like, like the cow tipping club, or whatever it is? That's you know what, Marzano, I, I can actually answer this one, because, you know, my, my first wife was in 4-H and FFA, a good old 6-4, so... Yeah. By the way, um, hey, hold on a thing. Everybody, that's Glenn's dad, by the way. So yeah, yeah. Hi, Spoon Man. Dad. Goes by Spoon Man. Hi, yeah. Artist in the seven one nine as well. So yeah, he's epic. But FFA is Future Farmers. <laughs> we got to take you up to Ramona. You need to learn a thing or two. Okay, but I, I thought it was. Vinny, I thought it was before. future. I, I thought it was future farmer. Or no, that's a future. Future farmers? I thought it was future assholes or FFA or something. I don't know. Some, I thought maybe he was making a little thing, but what's the 4-H? I thought it had to mean? do with horses. What's the 4-H four four H is, is on that that clover. It's 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 like health, happiness, and a couple other things, yeah. man. I, I don't know. Ask a 4-H. Four four H H yeah, 4-H is pretty special. We have 4-H here in Canada. Do we? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we do. I'll, I'll totally believe you. Me. I'm not going to fact check you or anything. They do everything that. from raising cattle, sheep. They do um, lots of speeches, writing. It's it's honestly the leadership group of I think the world. It's amazing, and they teach responsibility, respect, accountability. It's uh, you know what? If I you know had a, a cow or sheep, I would I would have been in 4-H, but I chose other things. Yeah, and by the way, uh, Nick, we love you, brother. Thanks, man, for, for watching, and thank you for your shout-out. Um, and, and David, but here's the thing. You know, guys, I, Vinny, you, you and I talked about this. You know, my mom and dad were born and raised in Italy, and they were born on a farm. When we came, and you guys don't see them, there's probably a good quarter or eight 
acre, maybe a little bit more of land that my dad has, and he used to farm everything. I mean, he had 30-some plants of citrus plants and fruits and everything. But he used to actually farm animals. I'm trying to make this so it doesn't sound where people are like, oh, my God. Yeah, he actually have we have pigs, cows, chickens, and we used to sit there, and, and my sister and I used to play with them, and then three or four days later, they weren't around. So, needless to say, they were either being, you know, well, you got, hey, you got, Joe, you know what prosciutto is, you know what dry sausage is, you know, I mean, it's very, in, in, in Canada, no. uh, what, some of the best prosciutto I'm comes out of Canada. <laughs> no. Tony, but, haven't you heard my minute, story though. about how much I do not like to know where it comes from? Yeah. It just it comes, comes from the supermarket. It comes from the supermarket. Well, and well, it, 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 it did come from the supermarket, the supermarket of uh, the Russo house. And, and here's, I think I said this before in the show. I didn't bring friends over. I had a lot of friends, right? A lot of friends I kind of held back from going in my garage because when you'd go in, there'd be literally, you know, the, the ham, ham hanging, drying, the capicolo, the sausages, um, you know, a lot of things. But you know what? At school, everybody wanted my sandwiches. They didn't. I had the best sandwiches. And I, every day it was like you know, the Italian ham, the Italian provolone, um, the chicken parm. And it's like <laughs> True anybody like, else. Yeah, you would, you would go over there and it was like walking into a butcher shop. It was but crazy. It wasn't just the, like the sausage and stuff hanging. It wasn't the animals, was it? No. Oh, okay. See, I not, broke up not, with not my when very I was there anyway. Uh, yeah. My very first boyfriend, I broke up with him because I didn't know he was a hunter. And then he told me to go into his garage because he was so proud of himself that he had shot a deer and it was hanging in his garage. No, 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 no. And I will never get that vision out of my mind again. No. That, you again. know what? That's animal cruelty. Now, and unfortunately, people have to, I mean, it's reality. I mean, unless you're a complete 100% vegan, I mean, 100%. It's reality. That's the food chain. I mean, it, you, you that's how they did it in the old days. They didn't even have, you know, the old butcher come down and, and grab your cow or your pig and say, hey, you know, I'll cut it all up and package it nice. They did it and they used everything. I mean, from the intestines to, to make sausages to the whole deal. So it was um, it was quite a, a childhood. But, you know, man, I mean, I saw that in New Jersey going into, like, Italian butcher shops and things like that. It's it's not that unusual. I can imagine it would be less unusual to see a deer in a garage in Canada. Um, Probably I not. Just, Probably yeah, I just here. think that's not something I would want to surprise someone I cared about with, you know, especially knowing how she felt. That's horrible. Can I ask how old you were? Um, I would have been grade eight, so it was right after I moved yeah. to Canada. Yeah, it's weak. And yeah, but he was so proud of it. He thought it was awesome. Sure. Yeah. Well, there, He's hey, Facebook friends with me now, so Dallas, if you're listening, that devastated me. Well, yeah. you know, hunting, hunting. True confessions with Joe Madden. <laughs> Only, right? on <laughs> Only on Stables Media. Only on Stables Media. That's, a good, that that's a good. That's a good show. Okay. All right. <laughs> True confessions. Here, 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 true confessions for me. That okay, wait, 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 wait. Now, now we're going to go here. We're going to go here. You know, the captain will steer the ship right down, and we're going to go here. So is there stories that no matter what, even your best friend, that you wouldn't tell? I think I don't Nicole hear. knows all my stories. So Nicole knows Nicole all your knows stories. All my stories, actually. Oh, I mean, every single really story, does. even even the worst of the worst. Um. Yeah, over the last four, three, four years, she knows everything. Well, I didn't say last what. Come on, I didn't give you a timeline. I'm just like, you know, did you like? Yeah, but I don't go tell stories from like before. Do you have a cutoff right? point, my, an age point, yeah. or you just sit there and say, no. okay, enough is enough? <laughs> well, well, no, she know. Before that, I was married and boring. So she doesn't want to hear married and boring stories. <laughs> hey, for all you married people out there, hey, for all you married people out there, send me your comments, your questions. We want to know how boring your marriage is, especially right now during this pandemic where you can't even have it, course, according to the Canadian government and the American government. True marital confessions with Joe Madden. Next on Stable oh, my gosh. Oh man! Oh, that would be a great show, marital confessions. Oh my god, that would be hilarious. 
Well, yeah. I'd like to find, okay, what, we want to bring this question around. Nicole, is there something that you actually, no matter what, a skeleton will always keep in the closet, no matter who you talk to, even a priest, if you're Catholic, you wouldn't say you? No, my life is pretty open. Um, I thought you were going to say my life is pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. It's pretty, I grew up in a small town, so everybody knows everything from that time. And then, I mean, my life is my life. I am who I am. Take it or leave it. If you don't like something I've done or said or whatever, like, I don't care. This is who I am. Well. I will say it is, uh, and then Vince, go ahead, up. and then I'll, I'll finish this up, Vince, but go ahead. If there's something that you, no matter what, a skeleton in your closet, you'll never release, um, not even to your best friend or a priest. No, no. You know, the documentary is going to come out eventually anyway. So. No, seriously, yeah, it's bad, right? Yeah, the hey, story, hey right? and, you, and just so for all the listeners out there, there may be some pictures that you might not want to sit there and see, so I'm just giving you a free warning. You know, oh, no, of- man, it's, it's, it's wholesome, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. All right, now the question the question goes to me. Yeah, to um, you, exactly. Answer it, Tony, come on. Well, I will. Um, you know, I, I've told my stories to everybody in the sense of I look in a mirror every morning and I tell that story if I did something wrong. And, you know, it's a reflection. Say, hey, that's it. Now, do I have some story stories that I probably wouldn't tell anybody? Yeah, they they involve the days of, of you know, running with um, the cousins and, and the things that we probably should have done. But I never, hey, I never hurt anybody intentionally. <laughs> never. So that being said, yeah. yeah you know, and, you know, as, as somebody who's known the man, as long as I have, there have been opportunities warranted opportunities i might add for exactly that and tony always took the high road even in you the have, day you have, to, you have no, to it's true so, really so let, so let me let me ask you this what would you do if you, you you found out that you had a rat in your family if i had a rash in my family I don't know. <laughs> i'd probably suggest getting medical attention <laughs> oh my god oh my god doctors <laughs> Oh my god, Vinny. Oh my god. Vinny, dude. Hey, Vinny, if you've got a rush, we can talk about it. Maybe the girls can help you out here. No, I no. don't, man. Either that or start you. Right. <laughs> yeah, your dad needs to help with rashes, oh I think. May I ask why you oh asked? <laughs> Vinny, what can I do? Is there something that we need to know that I can no, work with Tori and all that stuff? Hygiene's working out, man. <laughs> I know I have a hey, oh I know I have god, a list. I'm sorry, my, it, it's my, my communicator at that list that you confused a rash for a rat. a rat. I don't know how you did that. A rat. What would happen if you've had a rat in your family or your circle of friends? All right. Well, you know, the circle of friends. I mean, <laughs> you know, describe a rat. How rattiness was the rat in question? Was it a ratty deed? I'm, pre- I'm a very forgiving guy. You know, it would take a lot. A rat. A Vin, Vinny is Vinny is very pretty. You know, Vinny's uh, one of those guys. He, he's probably a lot more forgiving than I am in the sense of. No, I wouldn't um, say that. Yeah, uh, you're more Vinny, patient I, than I am. I, I yeah. You know what? You kind of you know he has the nodding of the head. I kind of sit there and let my my emotions out and let someone know. But then I'm done. Two minutes later, I'm done. So it won't be. It won't carry on. Even if I had an argument with, with you know my wife, whatever it was, it was. 30 seconds. Sometimes she'd want to carry it on. And I, I would laugh and she would get even she would get even more upset. And then she then she would demand an we apology. We hate when you guys laugh. That and, is and the worst. The best the best was she would demand an apology. And I said, okay, yeah, in a couple of days I'll give you one. And she would just, I mean, throw anything at me to hold it. And I would just laugh and walk. And then and then, you know, she'd end up laughing. So, you know, but you have to give and take. Um Vinny, if you do have a rash and you need some help. No, you're um, the one that asked, man. I didn't ask you about a rash. Uh, you know, yeah. When did this turn into a doctor show anyway? Uh, well, I, hey, we, we I could, don't want to uh, hear about the rash. Hey, yeah. we, could always, we, we could always call Dr. V. You know, Basu, he's the uh, the king of rashes, I guess. I don't know. 
Oh, oh, oh dear. Man. Vinny, Glenn says he loved you, dude. <laughs> And I guess, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Someone here, does have someone's same name? Man, he has weird. the speech impediment, and everybody laughs at me, man. Figure that one out, right? <laughs> hey, you know what? I use my speech impediment to my advantage. I'll tell you why. Because when you have a handicap, which I do, I consider it a handicap, people tend to listen a little bit better. So when I was in sales and in business, they always tended to pay attention a little bit more. So okay. it worked out to my favor. And I also, you know what? I use it as, as a laughing point. I don't, um, you know, even like my weight, when I was at say, it's having fun and, and go lucky. I mean, if someone's going to sit there and truly make fun, and Vinny, you know this, um, when we went to high school, people that would make fun of handicapped people or someone in a wheelchair, I literally would sit there and, and beat the shit up. I, I, um, Most of us would take some kind of action in the sixth floor. Yeah, definitely. But you know what? Those kind of people were pathetic to begin with, and everybody knew it. So, you know, I mean, they picking on a handicapped person is pretty low. Granted, teenagers, everything else, they're sick sometimes. But no, you know, most of us would have done exactly what Tony would do in that situation. Tell him to knock it the hell off. And yeah, I've got black eyes to prove that as well, certainly. That's six well, And I know the group the group that we hung out with with Rob and Glenn and, and Chris and Aaron and, and Aaron Keller and all those guys, Chuck and you know, one of the things that you, you just you, you can't pick on someone that can't sit there and defend themselves. And I always said that's why even with children nowadays where people sit there and say certain things like, you know, they're innocent. They don't know any better. So if someone's got if someone's got to get to that point, man, you got you got issues. And and even as an adult, I mean, if you've got to pick on someone that you can't sit there and you feel in, you, uh, you have to feel inferior to where you want to sit there and, and know they can't defend them or talk behind their back, whatever it is. They got issues. So, I mean, to me, stay up front, just like we're saying now. And, and whoever's listening, if they have an issue, send your comments. We'll, we'll, we'll take them on. I have nothing to hide from anyone here. But, um, but that's the difference now, Tony, is now it's a world of cyberbullying. Okay, and so let's, let's – Yeah, let's it, it, you, you, can't even, you can't even begin to explain the difference between taking a high school classmate aside and saying, don't pick on my friends, to – bullying across the nation, across the school district, across the youth soccer group, across the world. There's no comparison. It's so much harder these days. All right, and that's the thing. How do you confront a bully you don't see? Okay, so let me ask this, because we're going to go to Nicole and Joe on this one as mothers. My daughter, being nine years old, um, you know, I, I saw some things on, on her phone that I didn't really think was appropriate because of TikTok and all that. Excuse me. But, um, it's hard to keep 24 seven. And even right now with the situation that, you know, with the pandemic, how do you sit there and, and how do you get the, and I don't want to say control because I don't want to control anybody. You know, I, t I tell my daughters, I'm not trying to control you. I want to sit there and teach you that no one takes advantage of you and to be a leader and not a follower. So how do you talk to a young teenager or a young daughter or even a boy, um, at this age, say from 10 to, to 16, and make them understand that, you know what, here's the situation. You know, it's a different, like Benny said, it's no longer, you know, at school. Making, I wish they still do, Benny, by the way, at school. You know, you go to school with, without the right shirt on, they're making fun of you. You know, you, you got the wrong shoe. You're not got the in shoes, they're making fun of you. So, Joe, how would you sit there and, and handle that? You know what? You have to be completely open and honest with your kids. Um, it comes to a point where, especially right now, they're fully on Zoom. It's the perfect um, recipe for predators. Um, predators over the internet, our kids are sitting at their computer 24 seven, it feels like. Um, the availability to predators is insane right now. You have to be open and honest to them. My daughter actually, it was before the lockdowns. Um, she was contacted by a guy that offered to be her sugar daddy. And I was so blessed. Yeah, I was so blessed that I've been open to my kids and that they can come to me because she came right to me. And then we reported it because otherwise, if she was, if she felt she couldn't tell me, 
um, that's the perfect situation for these predators, right? They get them in a situation where the kids feel they can't tell their parents and they have to do what they're told. And yeah, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. So you got to be open with your kids. You've got to make them feel like they can come and communicate with you no matter what. Like you're Mike, not going to get mad at them for what someone else is sending them. So, well, M Michael Ashwood, the, uh, one of our followers and listeners, thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. Shout out to you. Um, he said the same thing is that you think you need to make sure your kids trust you, yeah. like you can tell them everything. But here's a problem though, and then we're going to go to Nicole on this. Kids always tend to have that tendency, and we did it when we were young, to have that little white lie. But when we did it, we were like a group, you know, we would go and say, hey, tell your mom, hey, I'm going to this guy's house and actually went to the other guy's house. But we didn't do, we didn't have the technology of this, of seeing people shake their booties. Um, you, you know, the, the F-bombs and, and the bitch word, every other song that's on TikTok or whatever it may be. And, you know, you can't censor it. The only way you can censor it is by taking this away and then taking a computer away and basically taking the TV away. And what do you do? You, you cause animosity, and now they're probably going to lie to you and do things even worse behind your back. So, Nicole, is there an easier way um, for a father or a mother to sit there and handle it? You know, I am grateful that my kids are older. So my older two kids were actually just at the start of when phones and technology came out. And then the younger two, you know, were sort of more in the midst. I, I feel awful for parents nowadays because those kids are exposed to it 24 seven. But like anything with parenting, it's about communication, being open and honest, whatever it is. And like I said to my kids and even the, the children that I coach in that, you can come to me at any time. If you are in danger or need help or assistance, I will not ask any questions. I will come. I will talk to you. I will get you from the bar, I will, whatever. I'm okay. here, and we don't even have to, to visit it. Call me. You know what? You're not supposed to be out. You went drinking. You were going to drive. You call me. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I will come save you. That communication and openness is so important. And then boundaries for your kids. To, to tell them, you can have electronics till this time, but they also have to have downtime. Because they are 24-7. Could you imagine the stress and pressure of having to be engaged, the fear of missing out? Like, these are real mental health issues for our children and society, even even adults and parents who are 24-7 engaged. Put it See, away. That, that you, you, hit it on, you hit the nail on the head there because um, that's the biggest issue that I'm having as a dad. Obviously, the loss of the mother and then dealing with the in, ex-in-laws um, the grandparents doing one way and then coming over here and then having, you know, my dad's way and then, then my, and then here I am saying, you know, don't do that. I don't want to be no, 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 no. So know that the phones and the iPads, and then again, not it for school. So they need it. So, yeah. you know, I try to tell my daughter, she's the one that's more so being on this TikTok, and I understand. I mean, I, I'm social media. I do my deal on there, but I tell her that there's a reason, there's a, there's a, a limit, and I know that I'm not going to cross that line either. Where, yeah. Joe, you mentioned it, where there's people sending you pictures. Um, and yeah. we talked about this. You know, I'm afraid that, that something like that could happen to my daughter, and yeah. and maybe she's afraid to tell me because she knows that would anger me to the point where I, I'll find out and make sure that person gets prosecuted. Yeah. So, so Tony, ha have you talked to her that she could possibly receive this? And in receiving this, she should come to you? Yeah. Because I, because before my daughter got um, the offer for a sugar daddy, I had talked to her and I said, this could possibly happen. This is happening to mm -hmm. a lot of teenage girls. And then so when it did happen, she came to me. So how, I, old, was, how old was your daughter when you, when you first talked to her about that? Um, you know what? It's, it would have been three years ago. She's 14. Now I started talking to her about it when she was 11. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's when she had her first phone. And I was like, I have to tell her all the possible things that could happen because they were happening to me. And if it can happen to me, it can happen to my daughter and more so my daughter, because people approaching me, um, they're less likely to get a response than approaching a 14 year old that, or 
11 year old that's like, oh, this this guy's just gonna give me $400 a month American, like, right? You look at these situations and these kids get trapped yeah. in these positions. You know, Michael brings a good point up. He says, downtime is huge. Uh, I agree, time, you can just feel the comfortable and chill of no plans. You know, I, I try to do that a lot when the kids were um, on a way, maybe playing dominoes or, or, you know, just reading or, mm -hmm. and many, you know, just having them run around. But my daughter had the issue that she has to have that phone by her 24 seven. And right now with the situation I'm in, because of the fact that COVID and everything else, I got it on the phone because I want to be able to communicate with her. And if yeah. something happens that she can get a hold of daddy, no matter what. So I have talked to her mm -hmm. about that situation um, that I'm always there. But again, you know, they're they're looking at what their older sisters are, half sisters do. When someone lies or someone says a fib or whatever it may be, you you kind of see mimic what your older sisters do or your brother. And I noticed that I noticed that even with my younger two boys, they do the same thing that she does. If she says something, no, I, and I'm looking at it like you would have never said that. Now all of a sudden, because Stella said it, you did it. So it's kind of like monkey see, monkey do type yeah. thing. So it, it is hard. Um, you know, I just hope that, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I called you the other day, Joe, when I asked you about my daughter's hair. She wanted to do her kingdom and scene. I think you might have saw her earlier. I did. She, it looks beautiful, did, by the way. It, it, it does. But as a dad, I'm thinking, oh, my God, do I say yes? If I say yes, then she's going to be always yes. And if I say no, I'm going to be the bad dad. Um, I want her to be happy. She lost a lot. So, yeah. I tend to use that as an excuse, but I also don't want her to think that you can use that as an excuse always and know that you're going to get away with something. Because life is, you know what? Life is not made that way. It's not a yes, yes, yes game. You're going to have adversities like we're having right now. I mean, in our, in our own family of network, we're having adversity. So there's always going to be ups and downs, and it's how you handle them that, yeah. that makes you better. Um, Vince, in the music industry, you dealt with a lot of, um, and we're going to get to David Andrews, he's got some comments too, but in the music industry, you dealt with a lot of adversity. Um, it, it's a um, dog eat dog world, I guess you want to call it? Yes and no. It can be, if you allow it to be. I'm very, very, very fortunate that my circle is really the limit of my involvement with it. But to answer your question, Tony, yes. Yes, it is a doggy dog world. It's it's as bad as any other business, worse than some. Um, I don't think it's any different than the other businesses I work in everyday life. I don't think it's any different than it is out on the street. You know, a man has to be wary in his line of work, especially his artistic line of work. Sure. Yeah. It's doggy dog, but in my circle, it's always been very supportive as well. And that's the beautiful thing about the very, very strict and limited field of music that I'm in, frankly. Um, but yeah, you bring up a good point, Tony. It's everywhere though, not just in the music business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, wanna, I wanna give a special shout out here, guys. First of all, Stables Media, you're listening to Freedom to Rock Friday with the awesome Joe Madden, the lovely Nicole Pierce, my great buddy, Vinny G, myself, Big Daddy. Trying to sit there and steer the ship right. And I think we're doing a great job here, guys. Every Friday, 5 p.m., live streaming. We've got tons of shows. Vinny, we'll talk about your shows later a little bit more. Um, I want to talk about Vincent here for a second. I want to give a special shout out to him. Um, last week, we had a friend of ours, mutual friend Vinny and I knew, um, they reached out to me and, um, we were, we were giving out Christmas trees and Vince, Vincent has a uh, Christmas tree farm, which he, do <clears throat> which he donated, uh, three trees. And I got a, a request from a, a mutual friend that if they can get a tree, um, because their dad was dying of cancer. And he, I talked to Vince and said, no problem. They went and got the tree. So they wanted to have a lighting the last time we're dead. They got the tree and the next day they lit it up and everything. And the next day the father died. I'm so sorry. So 
I um, want it from the bottom of my heart. And I know from Vinny and everybody here, Joe and Nicole and, and the stable media, um, Vincent. Thank you, man. You brought um, a little bit of cheer and a little bit of love and especially one last memory um, for that family. So we thank you from the bottom of our heart, my heart, myself, my friend, you know, you and I are He's a hero. Also, so that's so. what he is, really. In many ways, Vincent is a hero. And that's what the season's about, you know. To the people who are saying there's not going to be a Christmas, cancel Christmas. Well, a guy like Vincent and his actions tells you that you can't cancel <laughs> Christmas. Christmas is a state of mind. Thank you, brother. And Vincent, you just said, I'll be dinner. Buddy, you've done a lot. And um, thank you, man. We truly appreciate it. And, and, and you know what? Our whole our – whole Family uh, in the network is, is unbelievable. Stable media. We wouldn't we wouldn't be here as um, we try to help people. You know, we, we said this earlier, and we'll go in a little bit more detail if you want to. I mean, we can sit there and just focus on one show and sit there and say, "Hey, the hell with everybody." You know, we're not. We're focusing on, on the family, but we have in this in this great media company, yeah. the stables media, to sit there and help each other. That's one of the greatest things that we have. Is that each and every one of us. From Vince to Nicole to Joe to, to me to, to Basu to all the teams, uh, Taylor and, and Kent, they all want to sit there and see the people that come on this network succeed. It's not about an individual, how about me, me, me. It's about a, um, a we network, about a us. So that being said, Vincent, again, thank you truly from the bottom of our heart. We, 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 we really, really appreciate it. And you brought a, a memory and a joy. You brought a tear to my eye, man. It was more than a tear. I, I um, I had a few tears. Vince, you know that we we talked about it. So, um, Rob Cummings sat there and had a long comment here. I'm gonna read this, but you know we're gonna go ahead and read it. Um, to me, it's about the foundation we instill in our kids. We tell our kids it's about our love for that. Uh, we inquire about what we're doing. We aren't trying to micromanage them. We tell them God blessed us with you guys as our children. And it's our job to protect you guys with you like it or not. He's got a point there. And an very, eye-opener, very good point. And an eye opener was when we shared with them a story on the internet about this. It was an eye opener for them. It's though to be a it was tough to be a youth a youth today in today's world with technology. He, he's absolutely right. And and part of my English, I wasn't hey, I wasn't an English major in in that school, <laughs> and I'm still not an English major. There he is, another big warrior of the 6'4", right? Yeah, my buddy in the kitchen hall. Hey, Vinny, are you – hey, what's a you? I'm sorry, Tony, I got to go. I banged my tough. (laughs) Rob, I don't mean to be laughing. I'm sorry, man. I said youth, and it's actually – you know, it's a youth. You know, if anybody's ever seen my cousin Vinny, you know how that is. But he's absolutely right. Now, the problem is, though, what he says about showing someone something that's on the Internet what people do. I've shown my kids certain things and sometimes they get more intrigued by what they see. Does that make sense? They, they are curious. Kids are curious, but I am a firm believer and I have 20, I'm going 21 years experience with four children and that, you know, information is power, right? The more we teach them in age appropriate ways, depending on their age, there is an appropriate age and way. It's like having the birds and bees talk. You're not going to have an in-depth birds and bees talk with a four-year-old. That's, wait, that's wait, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 okay, wait, wait. I, I never got that talk, Nicole. So what is, whenever what you is have a, it with what is me, bird, I'd love wait, wait, to I don't even know what birds and bees are. Yeah, my bird. mom skipped that. My dad did too, so. Dude, my dad, hey, my, I, don't even think, yeah. I don't even think my dad, if I asked him now what sex is, he wouldn't even sit there and talk to me about it. <laughs> but that's a generation. But it's our job now as very educated. There is so much information for parents on parenting and what we can do. There's books for kids. There's books for teenagers. It's The information is there. And then, you know what? If, if something is important and of a value to you and your family, if that is the mountain you want to die on, and I say this all the time because – choose it if this is the mountain you're going to die on then you you are going to die on it for that and that's stealing and lying in my family we do not steal we do not lie and that is the mountain i will die on for my kids the rest of it 
Yeah, but okay. So Nicole, let me let me let me um let me follow up on that. <laughs> when you say you don't steal and lie, I mean you instill in your kids not to sit there and tell you a fib or you to lie. Yeah. Be yeah. honest with you. And I say this to my kids every day. I said, Daddy will find out one way or another. I said, it's better to sit yeah. there and be honest and upfront. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, again, I wasn't the angel when I, when I was growing up. I mean, I, I had said a lot of things. Um, yeah. But, again, it wasn't to, to try to hurt anybody. It was more to try to get away with certain things so we can go and do things. Um, but what happens when, you know, you catch them in that little fib and you tell them and then they think it's because – you're trying to keep, like, for example, my dad will tell me a little things about eating candy. It's like, hey, yeah. you know, you don't have to well, tell me. Is that the mountain you want to die on? Like, is that the the big issue, right? So if your child, if you find out, say, your child stole something from a store, Ooh. right? Or hey, You want to hear my story? You want to hear my story about that? Yeah. Oh, boy, yes. Doesn't involve Sarduti. You want to bring Sarduti in in this one? Because he'll confirm it. Ooh, so, what did you do? I was, I was 13 years old, and I was playing flag football. And my dad gave me money to go get a mouthpiece for flag football. Instead, I decided that I thought maybe I'd, you know what, keep the money and, and take the mouthpiece. I got caught. It wasn't the security guard, or it, it was his wrath that came down, and it wasn't, let's put it this way. I mean, in the old days, it wasn't, you know, talking to, it was, I mean, I got my ass whooped. And I actually had the the security guard, and I'm laughing about this now because I think about it so many years later, um, it was wrong. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and honestly, I didn't, I never... Oh, it's it just, you know, one of those things. It turns, okay, hey, maybe I'll keep the five bucks or whatever it was. But the security guard actually um, was so worried because of what happened, how my dad had reacted, that he actually called the next day to make sure I was okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> that kid alive. Oh, my God. I love it. That tells you, that tells you how bad I, I got it. And it wasn't – I got it when I was there. And I got it when I got here, and it was more. And I can see where my dad's point of view on that was: is that the embarrassment, saying, "Hey, I gave you the money." Now, now, you know, he wasn't. And this was at Kmart, by the way. But they're no longer in business. But um, it, it, you know, we do things as kids that, that sometimes we regret in stupidity. Yeah. Um, you, you hopefully you learn from those mistakes. But you know, as a child, that's when you can make the mistakes because they're easily fixed as long as they're not. To that extreme exactly but you know what that's that's the learning opportunity but that's also why it's our job as adults in, in the world to you know teach in the situation create opportunity to learn their kids are going to make mistakes that is 100 percent guaranteed we need to give them a safe place to make those mistakes and and joe your your situation with your daughter and and that was a perfect example of creating a safe space where she could have made a choice that would not have been great or the outcome would not have been great. But she went, you know what? My mom talked to me about this. Here's, here's my options. Right. And she admitted it to you. She also could have, who knows, texted or done some stuff, but then also knowing that you are a safe place for her to bring that to. And, and that's our job as, as parents and, and role models adults for for anybody and even for like our friends to know it is a safe place we're all humans my kids grade one teacher said if you have a belly button you're allowed to make a mistake and 99 percent of the population has a belly button so we're all allowed to make mistakes but wait a minute wait my question is this, wait wait my question is this, what if you have an any instead of an Audi? are you allowed to make two mistakes if you have an Audi? Wait. No, we're not. There's no special special needs for belly buttons. We got one. That's how it is. Sorry, Tony. It's just how it is. So. And which one is the correct one then, Nicole? There, we're, we're equal opportunity here on Stables Media. People. Equal, equal opportunity. opportunity. Belly button. If you guys want to start a show, we are not going to ask you if it's an any or Audi belly button. will. What's really funny about the whole scenario is we've got Tony, Joe, Nicole, and the kid, right? 
Tony, single father of three. Joe, single mother. Nicole, single mother. And me, right? You know, I might as well be talking about Cheryl Crow's greatest hit, huh? It's offensive to you guys to be asking me advice on how to raise kids. I mean, you know what? I'm going to put my two cents on this after I do our promotion here for Vigit App. Guys, if you haven't had the opportunity, Vigit is our sponsor, a corporate sponsor, V I G I T. Download the app, it's free. Use Stables Media Code, Stables as the promo code. It's a social media app for um, sports enthusiasts, um, you know, people that want to sit there and see how different betting, how, you know, interact with other people that have been on shows. It's a great app. They've got over 20,000 followers on there, guys, and they're sponsoring us and advertising with us. So, you know what? Download it. It's free. You can't sit there and go wrong. And you might even see me, Penny, Joe, or Cole on there. I know you see Basu on there. He's on there all the time. So download it. D I G I T. It is free. Stables Media. Actually, Stables promo code. Sponsored by Stables Media. There we go. Now, Vinny, going back to going back to what you said about you saying that, you know, being not having a, the experience or the advice of the father. Actually, I asked you, there's a lot of times I actually asked Vinny, hey Vinny, what should I do? And Vinny will sit there and give me his his opinion. He's like, nah, they're kids. And you know what? Sometimes from the outsider, you kind of see it saying, hey, you know what? They're, like you tell me numerous times, Tony, they've been tremendously good. What, you know yeah, what, and, what? And how do I preface everything I say, Tony? You know, you're you're asking the wrong guy, but yeah, absolutely, Tony, your father of the year, man. You don't need uh, my advice. You know that. And neither do these ladies, right? Absolutely. Ask me about what guitar to buy the kid. I might be able to help, you know. But well, I want to. I want to know. How, here's what I want to know: how, Where did you get those new glasses at? It's here. Where do you think? Awesome. Here. Where? Nordstrom. <laughs> yeah. Nordstrom's. Yeah. You I got Nordstrom. Nordstrom's, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Gift certificate, right? One of my pool customers cut. Said, hey, go buy a good pair of sunglasses, right? No, I got these at the dollar store. Of course I did. <laughs> you get you get that Nordstrom's out in Canada? And we have a Nordstrom's rack. Oh, I love Nordstrom. Nordstrom's one of, of my favorites. Yeah, I love it. It's a good, great shirt. I love it. I, okay, I, so go, I went into my very first Nordstrom's rack. Ne I didn't even know it existed. Oh, so no, Nicole, I was just gonna uh, Nicole, I was just gonna bring it up. Nordstrom's rack is the best because for big guys like me, a lot of times. You know, the 2X, but you get great things that, Vinny, I'll bring you there, brother. It's on oh, me at Christmas. See the moo moo he got last year, man. It's no. great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks bad. No, seriously, I go to Nordstrom's to spray cologne on myself sometimes if I have a date or something like that, you know? Oh, Can't go wrong. Do. They oh, think you're red. <laughs> hey, Vinny, is that how you get the smell night? You go there and you spray samples and you're like, you move on? <laughs> That's it, man. Yeah. You know? What do, we, what do we have here? The Bay? You could do that? Go to the yeah. perfume cologne aisle? They'll spray you all up. Oh, yeah. Not, not anymore with COVID. So you, you're SOL now, Vinny. But well, you know, when I was when I was a not naughtier young man, I used to go in and I would say, "I'm buying perfume for you know my sister. Can you spray this on yourself and let me see how it smells on a lady?" <laughs> Let's try that at home, kids. Hey, and he just wanted to make sure you wanted. To, yeah, all right. Hey, Rob, you thank you for that. Work. Right, R Rob. Uh, yeah, I want to meet that more. That's more. <laughs> I want. I want to give a shout out to Rob for watching the show. He said, "Thank you, great show." I have to get off. Had to work. Um, stay blessed, man. Be safe out there, especially with everything's going on. And we appreciate what you're doing. Obviously, going to work, and not many people are working right now. So um, stay safe out there, buddy. We appreciate it. Um, David Andrews again says, "Great show." But we got a question here. I want to know. Bob had asked. Um, the girls, what the birds and the bees? Is that the bees or bees? I thought it was okay. going to birds and the bees. My mom yeah. never talked to me about it, and apparently, I well, I've talked to my kids, but Nicole's got the lecture from her family, so she can go with that. Nicole, did you did you get? Okay, oh, hold on, hold on, okay, hold on. Did you get a visual, or was it just a talking? I mean, sometimes you know, like I'll take I'll take a piece of paper and I'll tell my daughter, "This is Daddy. This is you. Daddy's big. You're small." You listen to the big person because <laughs> daddy is your daddy. Now, if there's another big person that you don't know, you run, 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 and you yell, 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 yell. 
So I kind of have to visualize things sometimes for her. And she made, I, I just do it to make her laugh. But yeah. is, it, is that kind of something that you did with your kids? Well, so I never got the birds and bees talk. I'm like, so birds and bees, is, it's the sex talk. It's, I don't know why it's called that, because I say all sort of, sorts of crazy Canadian things, I think. So the sex talk, and I never got that. Like, I had to rely on my older sister, Amanda, for information. And even then, like, it was so not really talked about because it was embarrassing, which is crazy. So when I had kids, I decided, and again, I day home. So I looked after kids for a living, <laughs> lots of kids. And right from little, you know what? We just talk, you, you call everything by its actual name. We don't make up names and, and pretend things. And they have a question, you answer it. Like when, so. So, why, so you actually you actually call a penis a penis and a vagina a vagina? Yes, the, See, the I actual call proper terminology. I call it, I call it pee pee and I call it the flower. <laughs> My kids. The flower. Well, that's not the case, so you shouldn't lie to your children. <laughs> well, I don't want. I don't <laughs> want to hear, I'll hear the I'm thing. I'm you know, I'm a five year old, and I said the flower. I mean, because here, here's the other thing too. Let me ask you this: When is it appropriate for the daughter not to sit there anymore? Because I get a little uh, the dad. I'm like Stella. I don't need you dressing. And doing your dancing, and I say, go to the bathroom and do what you need to do. And but we're very close. That's my little princess. So you know, I still think she's my little baby. But when is it to the point where you have to sit there and say, hey, you know what? Get your butt in the bathroom, do what you need to do, and your brothers don't need to see you anymore. Go do what you got to do. Well, you know what? We just talked about a private time, right? And there's certain there's things that we can do in public, and then there's private things that are just meant for us, and it's very special and. You know, I just, I think the stigma of any of that being embarrassing, it should be gone completely. Have the conversation. K Caitlin and Kyler were very little when I got pregnant with my third child and then my fourth. And they full on asked, like, how did that baby get in there? What's going to, and you know what? We just had the conversation in a little bit, you know, three and four year old conversation. And um, your sister Amanda said something about you had, you always in bed. Choice. I, I don't understand that. That you're part. Oh, you're part she's being she's being sarcastic. That I shouldn't have put all my trust in her to tell me everything. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> never mind. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't. You know you're what? Sarcastic. It's in a rock. You know what? And I got one of these minds that, that just sometimes just goes out to. Vinny, where are you at? Vinny, where's my, my buddy Vinny? I, I always want to look this all right. I can't even see him anymore. I love you, Vinny. I miss you. Yeah, I know, man. I, you know, my arm hasn't hurt in days from not getting punched, too. That's been great. Can't get the old. Yeah. And again, you know, get to see both sides of the face, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, you get the right side of the face. And I don't have to be like this all the time. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. But you know well, what? Hey. Yeah. I miss you, buddy. I love, I actually love working live with you, but. Hey, hey, we'll be back, right? Me so I, I, I asked Vinny tonight. I said, Vinny, why, I said, Vinny, why don't you come over to Sarducci? And he goes, no effing way. <laughs> no way, man. I might park that car too close to the curb, man. <laughs> you got yeah, in trouble. Got home. Lock. I will see you later, trouble. sir. Oh, we talking about it. You got in trouble. <laughs> I'm not laughing at my dad. He's like, you got a problem with dad, really? <laughs> He's got to go three, in front of three houses down. He's got to sit there. And I'm like, okay. We're doing the show from the car nine feet down the road. Okay. <laughs> hey, Vinny, I, I can tell you, I, one of these days, here's what we're going to do for the show. We'll be, it'll be like a topic. We'll write five things that our parents did to us that were wild and wacky. No, and no. I'll tell you what we're going to do, man, is yeah. I'm going to come over to your house and wish Sarducci a happy birthday arbitrarily. I'm just going to pick a day, like a Friday, <laughs> and I'm going to come over, man, with streamers and balloons. I'm going to wish him a happy birthday and see what he's Wait, wait a minute. He, he's in the kitchen. He's gonna, he's gonna, I'm looking over there because if he hears me, he's going to come here and start yelling. But listen, hey, what did I send you the other night? Oh, yeah. This was great, lady. Unbelievable. This blew me away, girl. This blew right. Me away. Oh, it was beautiful. Sarducci's sitting on the couch, feet up, in the moment, watching The Who, right? The rock band. Couldn't believe and, it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so here I am. Rocking I'm, with the good taste, talking Elvis and the Beatles. And yeah, asking questions. Memories. he's going to be on Spin the Record. 
Yeah, I started asking questions. Wow. No, no, seriously, I started asking questions. But here I am whispering, like, I'm afraid of my dad going to come in with a bat. It looks like you're room. afraid he's going to come up and do one of these at the back. No, of no, he won't. No, 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 no. He'll, just, <laughs> no, he'll start yelling and screaming. But he, he's actually been pretty calm lately. Um, I think he's taking some kind of, I don't know, dude. God, God thank you, whatever. I love you. <laughs> um, but no, he was sitting there watching that. And I did a double take and I said, hey, did you mess up on the channel? And he said, leave me alone, sir. Right? I said, yeah, I know you like that, dude. So I started recording him on clip. You know, because I got, I tell you, girls, I got 100 hours worth of clips. When you guys see this stuff, you guys are going to piss your pants. I, and I literally mean it. You're going to fear because it's at me. It's Sarducci's way of doing exercise. Um, Sarducci's way of washing dishes. Um, Sarducci's way of sweeping. So when he does things, when he when he had that night, a couple nights ago, and he's watching the the uh, who, and I did a double take, and I started asking him a video, and I asked him, I said, "So did you ever see the beat?" I because now remember, I have relatives in England. That my, my he has two brothers and a sister in England that lived there. I knew about them before you were even born. I said, "Yeah, I was born in seventy one. They were up before I was right." So, and then I asked him about Elvis, and what did he say, Vinny? Oh yeah, yeah. He was into Elvis and everything else. Yeah. Oh yeah, lots of yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, the thing is, what you ought to do, Paisano, is you ought to tell him, you ought to say, you know, you know who plays that song really good? Vinny. Oh no, 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 Vinny, no I don't like Vinny, that crap. Vinny, you know how to play the accordion? Do I? Yeah. What kind of a nerd do I look like? <laughs> Maybe you male accordion players, right? <laughs> Dude, no, I don't play the accordion. Some of the funnest parties I've been to. Some of the funnest parties. Let what girls? I'm gonna tell you this right now. Some of the funnest parties I've been to, Italian parties with people that play the accordion. And I mean, Italians they drink and have a good time anyway. It's like you know, going to Parmissa or a Greek wedding or whatever. Those are some of the best parties around. So many. But the accordion players don't get any luckier than the guitar players, Faisano. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, Lawrence Welk stuff, right? No, the great musicians, but no, I don't play. Uh, dude, by the way, by the way, girls, uh, speaking, bubble. Speaking, of, speaking of Lawrence Welk, Lawrence Welk Village is only about 30 minutes away. And look, we used to go there all the time. My mom loved Lawrence Welk. Oh, yeah, it's very cool. Every Saturday, every Saturday. So he's well known in our part of Neck of the Woods. Probably, what, 30 minutes away, Vinny? You think that village is? Yeah, it's close enough to that. Sure, it's yeah. a great place. Good place to golf, too, man. It's a great place yeah. to golf. Yeah, got my first hole-in-one there. Wow. Yeah, hole number nine. Hole number nine. They still have my name on there. And I go there, and they, they misspelled my name. With, instead of the Y, they put an I, but it's okay. It's still my name. Um, but it's okay. I, you know, hole-in-one, yeah. Yeah. Do cool. they still have that monument up when you fell in the lake on twelve? No, that was a different golf course, and I ran the. the uh, <laughs> was it okay? Right, yeah. yeah you know, was, Vinny, don't let this could, guy in, man. Uh, uh, we had David Justice and I. Um, we had some fun with the golf cart one time. We went on the one. We had a charity event, and you know, we had a couple cocktails. And I decided to go down the hill a little too fast, and, and it and we did like a three sixty. <laughs> and David goes one way, I go another way, and all our clubs go into the lake with the cart, and I'm like, I guess we get another one. But yeah, we have some fun. It happens. What are you going to do? <laughs> it happens. So back to what my dad said to me. He goes, Elvis, I know Elvis. He died. He was fat, just like you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, man. Dude, I just start, I'm crying laughing on video, right? No, he, then, said, he said he, he's fat like you and he's a big shot like you, too. Don't forget the big oh. shot, man. He did, yeah, he did, he he did say that. I, I was dying laughing. I said, oh, my God, man. And it was just a, what, Vinny, maybe a minute and a half? If that, if, man. But you know what? That's Sarducci. The gold runs in a very thick and short line, right? He's a classic. You know, girls, we really do have to um, – I, I mean, I would ask him to come out here, but I don't, I don't want to ruin the show. <laughs> Um, no um, man, he sees me. The show's over. <laughs> no, no. If he saw, he saw Joe Nicole, he would sit down and actually. You okay, tell Benny. You'd get, to, yeah, you'd have to get up. I wouldn't Benny. be about that thing. Yeah. Uh, Glenn says, "Great show, very insightful." I'm a parent of two teenage girls. Glenn, um, hey, by the way, Glenn. hey, and I want to sit there and say a shout out to Glenn. Glenn's becoming a granddad. 
Oh, oh congratulations. congratulations. Yes, he has a daughter and 21 years old. From, I remember 21, 22. I don't know for sure. I'm sorry, Glenn, if I misspoke, but uh, he is becoming a granddad. Many blessings to you, my friend, and I hope uh, everything is safe and healthy. Yeah, she's she's actually in her late twenties, Tony. But yeah, you're right on track. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know the exact. No, it's okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's she's a fabulous gal. Um, all three of the kids are. I'm very blessed. You know, I I don't know Fiona very well, but I'm happy for Glenn being a granddad and everything. But let me tell you about his other two. You know, Roxy and Squeaky. You know, his daughters. I mean, not only are they they're just two of the most adorable girls on the planet, but they rock. And I've had the opportunity to play with them and you know what an environment what a dad what a way to think outside the box and tony does the same thing with his kids you know he calls them his rock stars mm -hmm. well, they are rock stars you know all of them so and i'm sure your kids are too ladies i hope someday i get to see that for myself <laughs> Love that. oh wait Love here that. you go hey and hey, glenn's gonna confirm it 29 and it's a boy glenn i'm sorry uh, I, should never, I should never open my mouth in my mouth in trouble, my, well, not my mouth in trouble, but I get myself in trouble by opening my mouth too early and too without knowledge. So I'm sorry. 29, and it is a boy, and congratulations. Congratulations. David yeah, also says, is Tony. Oh, that's awesome. That, you, dude, can you do that, brother? Guarantee, no, you got to name him Tonino. My real name is Tonino. They're still naming him Tony. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Just so you know, my dear friend and Vinny's friend also, Stephanie, um, Stephanie Harris, um, she's going to be coming on the network, starting a new show here. Within the next week or two, we're going to iron out a few things on her ideas. She's got a great idea, um, great and following. I, I loved her on that Samore. I loved she her. Stephanie, you're going to do incredible. Yeah. She yeah. is funny. She is funnier yeah. than hell. <laughs> she She's known me. She's known me really well. Um, she said your mouth doesn't get me in trouble. Yeah, it's uh, just another it's, legend of the six four, right, Tonino? Yeah. And, and yeah. Stephanie, I loved how you were putting Tony in place and Lady D and saying, "Come on, guys, wrap it up. I got to go to bed." Like, oh yeah, she does not She don't. She don't. She don't. <laughs> sit there. She don't it was perfect. Around. No, she doesn't. Um, she doesn't. She tells you how it is, and you gotta listen. <laughs> She's one, of, she's one of my friends that, you know what, no matter what, you're right, Stephanie. Okay. And by the way, Stephanie, just so, can, can you, I mean, what, in your little comments, can you tell us again what you were drinking? Um, the probiotic. It was a probiotic drink that had the alcohol in it. And she said it was good, so I don't know. I, she might sit there and send it to us again. But it was weird. I, I didn't know they had drinks that had probiotic in it to sit there and help. Yeah, them. maybe that's, that's something you could feature on your cooking show, Tony. You're going to sit You're trying to tell everybody every, all the secrets, huh? All the secrets. Sure. Hey, I saw the preview. It was outstanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gotcha. was. I wanted that meal. Looked delicious. You know, it looked good, yeah. didn't it, man? Looked a hell of a lot better than the bologna sandwich I had, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Do people you still have, eat bologna? Me on the cooking okay. show, Joe. Vinny, right? people still I'm eat bologna. I'm going to show you how to make a pop tart. Yeah. Dude, I've, I've never had bologna in my life. <laughs> my cousin, my little cousin Mitchell, he used to have bologna and ketchup sandwiches, and I thought it was the grossest thing. Gross. Oh, so oh gross. no, I put Fritos on mine. It's bomb. <laughs> right. yeah. like, could you, could you yeah, see me right? running the chefs out on Tony's show, right? Yeah. I love <laughs> Boiling it. Boiling water. <laughs> okay, who else eats bologna? I, I've never ate bologna. My cousin used to eat bologna. Tony, I hope bologna? you never have to. <laughs> Learn to cook, right? Joe, yeah. I, I told you this before. In in high school <laughs> and middle school, every day it was Italian ham, provolone cheese imported, uh, mozzarella. Um, you know, my mom used to do little veal cutlets or, or little, you know, the, the thin meat cut. And, and then cold. Sometimes it's really good cold. And, and I have it every day. And my friends were like, Tony, I, yeah, dude. Like, you know, and then they would have like, peanut butter and jelly to this day. And I swear my mother didn't have it. I still not have had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. What? Really? I've he had peanut wow. butter. Said this I've, had peanut butter. I've had peanut butter by itself. I've had jelly on, on my toast or on crackers, but I've never put it together. I, just, I think the, the texture and the look of it. No. Next Friday. Next Friday, peanut no butter way. and no jelly way. sandwiches. 
Okay, mm -hmm. so I used to love them, but then I taught English in Taiwan for like, I don't know, two years in total. The food over there was not good. I ate so many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches daily that I can't eat them again. But Tony, yeah. you need to try it. I loved them before. Stephanie said she drink, she drinks. <laughs> you know, she drank. <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie, I've been drinking, I guess. Um, fried bologna sandwiches and, and as kids. I've never had that. Um, let me ask you this. Spam, you guys? No, but, you know, I'll tell you what I did do is one of the great things about peanut butter and jelly is the staying power of it because I used to get half an hour for lunch. And I know you know this, Tony, but when the pandemic started, man, I would buy a loaf of bread, jar of peanut butter, jar of jelly every day, and I would make as many sandwiches as I could. I and, give myself, them and I'd pass the rest out at the park, you know? That's oh, what you do, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Play guitar, whatever, you know? People, Some would offer to pay. I wouldn't take the money, obviously, but I would say, you know, pass it on, whatever. Um, and, yeah, I'm and, proud, you know, in a lot of cases. I know you're not knocking peanut butter. I get it, you know. No, if, no, no, um, no, 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 Had Had the facilities to do that, I would have been eating good, too. But, um, hey, you know, well, I'm eating a and, lot of peanut butter. Yeah. And that, you know, it's, it all comes down to the generation you live in, you know, obviously being Italian, you know, top ramen. Never heard of that. I mean, now my kids have because being Japanese, you know, half, half Japanese. Or a quarter Japanese and, and, and their grand grandmother's Japanese, you know, they they eat ramen. They also eat the ramen in the thing. And actually I've had it, it's pretty good. Um spam, mm, you know, I've seen it cooked, seen it come out of that can and that gooey stuff around it. Yeah, when that's I, that, kind of see, a turn off. See, yeah, one when, when you see stuff, some, yeah, when you see it. something that has that gooeyness and then it says expiration date, no expiration date, that tells you there's a problem with it. Okay, so out of all four of you, has anyone ever had a Vegemite sandwich? Or oh, good God, no! Wow. Wow. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Can you speak a little bit slower? I'm not... I said, out of all of us, has anyone other than me had a Vegemite sandwich? What the hell's a Vegemite? Vinny, do you like it? It was different, oh, yeah. man. You know, it's it was a long, long ass time ago. Yeah, it, it was something baseball related here in San Diego, but I do remember, yeah, an Australian team. Was making Vegemite. What the Vegemite? It was really kind of strange. I, it, my best recollection is it was kind of water crusty, kind of crunchy. It wasn't bad. It was definitely different. It was almost like eating to me a crunchy lettuce sandwich with a lot more flavor. You what know? Are they? Okay, so Vegemite, it's it's like a paste. It's like black. So whatever else they put on that, but it's super salty. So, but yeah, Tony, yeah, very anchovy-like, yeah. right? Yeah, like, you yes. would have heard the song. Um, oh what's the song? At work. The Vegemite sandwich. Yeah, the Men at Work song. You've heard it. Everyone's heard it. I grew up eating Vegemite sandwiches or fairy sandwiches, which are like terrible for you. That's just white bread and butter, and then you know the sprinkles. You know the like, yeah, the sprinkles on it between bread. You guys, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what sprinkles? <laughs> The, you won't sprinkles. you won't eat you won't eat what the hell is the the the, the oh you won't eat fruit cake i love eat, fruit cake and, and you'll eat vegemite what the hell that sounds like a vegetable processing machine so you know what I, my number one sandwich as a kid was is i used to take my two pieces of bread i used to get my creamy peanut butter out and i used to get a tablespoon of chocolate quick ooh, and throw yeah, that, that on it um, oh man that was eaten it sounds good right now with white oh, bread. Oh, like the Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cup sandwich. It was the bomb. Yeah. Wait, you, no, guys, you, guys have, you guys have eating issues, man. You, I mean, how's, how's, your, how's your intestines and your, you know. Wait, your, wait till your, I come on your perfect. cooking show. Right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let, me, let me let everybody know. because I, I don't know if Nicole knows this. I'll tell Nicole. So, Nicole, I'm doing a cooking show called Cooking with Big Daddy. And it's just 30-second live feeds that I'll put out. But I'm actually having it professionally, you know, obviously with the network, um, edited music, the whole deal. And then we're going to put it out on the, the network on our channel. But it's exclusively for my daughter to sit there and all the recipes that my mom had. And then I'll actually add, you know, different things. I've had people ask me and they say, Tony, I've tried the recipe. I can't do it. Um, I don't understand why it didn't come out the way it was when we had it at the restaurant. I'll revert back to the same thing. It's like... My mom used to always say, hey, you have to cook with love. 
B, it, it takes time. And C, if you think you're going to throw everything in a pot at one time, like most, um, everybody thinks it's fast, quick, and easy, throw in a crock pot and go, it doesn't work that way. Um, especially the recipes that my mom has from, you know, her sauces to her desserts. No. And I didn't get this skinny because I ate bad, so. <laughs> <laughs> So what what about spam? If we're on the topic of crazy like things people eat, we don't have like we well we do have spam here, but it's an American thing. Spam for sure is an American thing. No, I heard I thought it was a Jap I thought it was a Japanese Hawaiian thing. It's definitely know. a Hawaiian thing. And yeah, it's it's been very much Americanized over the last thirty or forty years, I'd say. Um, it sounds to me like it's more American oh. than Canadian, which Spam is the national <laughs> meat of Hawaii. Yeah. Fun, fun fact, Joe knows you <laughs> said that to me. Jesus, hey, right? That's why, that's why they all, hey, I, I'm a, well, I'm, I better not say anything about Hawaiian because I got a lot of small friends. Up. Never mind. <laughs> I'll pass up to I, I, don't think I, spam. I think it's great, you know, but I also like when they, you know, and I don't know if you ever went to one of these in 6-4 Paisano, but remember the pig in the ground parties? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a there little There you idea. go, man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dude, I had, hey, I've had, hey, I've had blood pie, my friend, so I've had it all. I mean, I've had sheep's brain. I've had cow brain. I mean, I've, I haven't had cow nuts before. My, I mean, no. What is, what is that. blood pie, Tony? I don't know what that is. Um, blood pie is the version of Italian, um, like a chocolate cake, but, um, it's actually made with, uh, the blood of a pig. Yeah. And you mix, you mix it with cocoa and it actually, if you didn't know what it was, you would think it's chocolate cake. Yeah. Um, but when someone tells you that afterwards, it's, you're like, hmm. And then, but now, you know, it, it, back then they used... They used everything from, you know, anything they butchered. I mean, they used everything from mm -hmm. the, the, the brain, the intestines, the, you know, whatever they could, they used. Um, you know, my, they, they used to make blood, blood sausages. I mean, that's so yeah. big in certain countries. They love blood sausages. So it, it is not um, some. And then, you know, it's funny. You go to certain countries, it's big and it's like huge. Just like we talked about last week, espresso, you know, 20 years ago. When my dad was drinking espresso out of a machine, people were like, oh, man, that tastes like dirt, blah, blah. Now, there's a Starbucks every, you know, what, maybe 600? Oh, yeah, Sarducci was a trendsetter. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, who amongst us, Tony? You know, I grew up with, with you know, the, the little shots of espresso, you know, sitting on your, your uncle's lap drinking espresso at four or five years old, too. So we grew up a little bit differently, too. I know <laughs> When I, I got in Nashville, man, there were people who didn't know what espresso was. They had no clue. And this is a ask, years ago. I got to ask Stephanie. Stephanie, you, have you ever had any cow nuts or nuts in general? What, what are they called? There's actually a name for them. Um. Oh, uh, what is it? Uh, what's that country called? <laughs> no country. What, what you to be? What's that? Um, uh, I can uh, tell you this, okay? When I lived in Oklahoma, um, you know, and was playing a yeah, when I played in Oklahoma and was playing a little bit, they have a festival every year, and it's called the Calf Fry Festival. No, they but there's some they, calf, they don't fry calves, but they do eat the calf balls. Yeah, yeah. but there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a word for it, and I can't there think is. of it. I can't think of it, it and it's it, it, it is big in, in a lot of Midwest areas they drink sure. rocky mountain oysters rocky mountain yeah. oysters yeah exactly. oh, I've heard that before. But, yeah. Is that there you go ryan there you go bro, buddy that's why the listeners are watching and and sitting on mountain oysters we have people coming in all over the place now mountain oysters. you guys have had all here hey, stephanie stephanie is the uh no count up here not my side of the fence <laughs> Oh, Stephanie, you can't. Stephanie, me Stephanie, out. Stephanie, I can't wait to your show, man. She, by the way, she does not like nuts in general. So she likes flowers, but not nuts. How do people have flowers? Flowers. He's talking oh, in lingo. Yeah. yeah. I'm giving you lingo. You remember what I said? I told my kids when I called her. You forgot about that, right? Well, yeah, it's, or or as we say, I it's now versus almond joy, right? Yeah, either you're a hey, either you're a pitcher or you're a catcher. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey oh, guys. God. I almost Listen. said something. I'm so glad I didn't. Okay, just, hey, just sit here quiet. Today, today was a, 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 a day of all days. I am truly, truly blessed that we're listening to Freedom to Rock Friday um, with the Fantastic Four. Never mind the, the Fab Five. Four, yeah. No, no, never mind the Fab Five. We got rid of the, the, the Five. The Fantastic Four. I like it. Fantastic Four. Um, we could come up with a different name, but I love it anyways. Um, Joe, sorry you had to go through what you had to go through, but you know what? Oh. Makes us stronger. Nicole, we love you. I'm so happy. I see, you know, Nicole, that little doggy that you have next to you <laughs> has, not moved, has not moved more than maybe twice. It's like, oh, I thought it was like um stuffed animal at first. And I'm like, it's a look at right. it. So last week we talked, and I want to, we're going to get, we kind of run out of time. Not really run out of time because we know the network owner, but it's not Mancini, by the way. And the little doggy that you have there can you show us the outfit you have on tonight for him but she's in the same outfit she's wearing her sweater i'm not sure why her lips stuck in her teeth that looks much better this is lucille penelope she is the baby and she's got a turtleneck on today you know what? It, it, she's so cute do she looks, yeah. she looks lucille the turtleneck gang i do too <laughs> but my mine mine yeah mine's just down a little further <laughs> She's she sticks close to me. She likes to be nearby. So, Joe, what kind of what kind of clothes are you wearing? I mean, what kind of clothes are your dog wearing tonight? I'm sorry. <laughs> I have clothes on. My dog has none. <laughs> Lily is naked today. Joe, well, wait, Lily wait, wait, is naked. I'm on camera, so I'm probably no, no, not the, the reason. Okay, wait. I I gotta, I gotta confirm why I said that because Joe had an idea about a show saying that you know I want to do a show and you don't have to wear pants. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, pants are always optional because at my house, I hate wearing pants. And so, whenever my friends are like, hey, I'll come over or hey, let's go do this. I'm like, OK, let me put on pants. It's always what I say. Well, at least you didn't say you didn't have to wear tops because then we'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny, just keep wearing that shirt, buddy. You'll be good. So, hey, we got oh, 70. Well, I'm, I'm all set for for pants free Fridays, man. That sounds great. Hey, look at it. Stephanie's already to rock a whole new meeting. Right? Step, hey, you guys Stephanie, have no clue what I'm wearing. <laughs> Stephanie's got to feed her pussy cats, guys. So love you, Stephanie. Go write some bits for the show, and we'll talk to you soon, guys. We're gonna close it out here. A couple more minutes, we'll close it out. Um, Vinny, any? Uh, I know we really don't have any special plans out in six four. Everything shut down, but um, last I'm words. Given a couple guitar lessons. Thank, thank goodness. You know, um, gonna work on some tunes. Uh, Think good holiday thoughts. What else is there, man? Well, I'm gonna I'm, for each other, right? I, I'm gonna. Um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do here afterwards. Um, Nicole, you uh, right now are giving a, a a scratch to your dog. Yes. I used yep. to love that. I used to love that getting scratched. I, I love that. That's <laughs> kind of like a little. Well, yeah, but but the dog good. doesn't have fleas. <laughs> You're an asshole, dude. <laughs> My oh, dog was hey. Christmas ornaments. I had to my, go stay. Michael there. says you got it the best. Makes my night. You know what? That's true. I, you know what? That makes our night. You know what? We only have one person that sits there and loves the show. And I know we have more than one because I can see how many people are watching. Um, so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So what do you have planned um, this weekend besides putting pants on? Maybe. Well, I, I'm not planning to put pants on all weekend because I actually don't have to go anywhere. So if I go anywhere, I'll put pants on. Um, otherwise, another true confession. Another true confession. <laughs> pants are overrated. I don't know. I grew up in Australia. It's just my kind wait, of thing. Wait, my okay, fireplace, wait, 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 my house wait, 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 is hot. Wait, 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 wait. Before we, we can't just leave it on. The you do yeah. wear pants. Yeah. You, you at least have, I mean, underwear on, right? Most of the time, yes, a hundred percent. Because what happens if you have to yeah. really? I mean, it's an emergency. You have to go. Oh, I mean, because I always—that's my biggest fear of like, you know. Tony, I, I escaped an earthquake with no underwear on and just a t-shirt. So at this point, I really don't care. You can joke, you know. Yeah. I, I, I saw that on your one of your posts about your earthquake. We really never got into that, and I don't want to talk about it tonight because we're going to get ready to go. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to sit there and have that conversation on what you went through so people know 
um, a little bit more about us in general, because people know about me, they know Vinny and Nicole. We want to make some, you know, of your stories into part of the Freedom to Rock. Um, it's not just all about laughs, and we do laugh about it, but we like to take the adversity that we went through and sometimes look at the brighter side and, and sometimes smile about it because we're still here. So that being said, Joe, um, no plans? Um. No, actually, there is none. We are, I get to go to the gym one more morning. I didn't think I got to go to the gym tomorrow. They had said at 12 a.m. on Saturday, the gym's closed per their email, which would mean tonight, right? Mm -hmm. right. But then when I went to the gym this morning and I did a huge workout, um, and then I came home and then my friend was like, no, they said 12 a.m. Sunday, but the email's all said Saturday. So they're open tomorrow, so I'm gonna go one more time. I'm gonna go at seven when they first open and do a big workout and then come home and make um, my kids brunch. And there's college football on NFL and that's my weekend. I'm here. So can I ask you call him at, at 6 a.m. our time, seven years when you're on that Stairmaster, he told me. Please do. Yeah. So <laughs> um, just so a personal question, because obviously we um, we like wine. Yeah. How many, how many bottles of wine did you guys get stocked up for the weekend? Oh. Uh, I I haven't bought any wine currently. Oh, that's right. You're drinking the new stuff. I want to ask you about that real quick. Is that good? Because I want to get that. Because I've never tried it. I like seltzer. Is it something manly, or is it something that you know that people will sit there and think that? And you know what? Any anybody can drink it. I also drink neutrals, which are a little less sweet, or vodka soda with a lime wedge. So. It's all good. They're good. Oh, I, you're you're my kind of woman. You're my kind of woman. Vodka soda, lime wed. I used to drink vodka, you know, vodka, just get a lime and squeeze it and just yeah. drink it straight with ice. And that's it. So you know what I know? find funny? What I find funny is he's asking you, is it a manly drink? Have you seen those glasses he wears, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> he's worried about whether it's a manly drink, right? Elton John hey, over Diddy, there. Hey, Diddy, yeah. you, know that, you know that finger that you gave me on the show that one day? Back to you, buddy. <laughs> it was this one, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, cool. it's cool that well, he is. It was uh, the Italian uh, community. community. Yeah. So, okay, ladies. Um, yes. You guys, uh, I, I couldn't be more blessed to be part of the show, part of the network. So thank you for all our listeners out there, for all the, the watch, people that are watching, followers. Um, we love you. Thank you. Um, Glenn sent me something uh, to work on. He sent me a audio. He says, Tony, do me a favor. Just put some uh, of your vocals on it, and I will do that. And, Vinny, you, you didn't tell me about this. That's okay, buddy. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to um, – I got to be honest with you, yeah. It, it's kind of a surprise to me, too. He must have found something that's going to suit your soothing, yeah. you so, know, well, style. Well, that's the only thing I can think of. Because I've already got a tune picked out for you, and you already Jolene, know that, right? So I, I'm gonna do, I'll do Jolene for you. Okay. Do, As we close out, will you sing it? Oh, As no, 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 I, I, I have to work. Everything's got to be, got to have a couple cocktails. Um, I got to have the hat on, you know, it's, 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 it's all part of the artist, right? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I can't just, it's like, um, you're uh, like you know. in the dressing room. I only want the red Skittles. That would be Nicole, right? Red Skittles. Red, what, what's red Skittles? What? I don't I, know. I, like I, I would say like the artist Skittles. in the, in the dressing room. What's your favorite color of Skittles again? Is it red or is it the Starburst? It's the pink Starburst. <laughs> it's the berry green. bag of Skittles. The berry bag. The berry bag. Okay. Yeah. That's I, Nicole's I, thing. Green. Yeah. I like green. I don't know why. Somebody told me green got a special color on it. I don't know. Well, at Nicole's <laughs> birthday, we were doing taste tests because one of the dads was saying they all taste the same. He was trying to destroy my dream and my life, and I was having none of that. It was my birthday. It's my rule. <laughs> Did you hear that? Destroying dreams and life. Oh my god! <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, I've had a few. Hey, I've had I've had a few nightmares in my days. <laughs> hey, just promise me this, girls. Do not have any dreams about what happened today or nightmares. It's done. It's over with. Um, we will move forward. We will sit there and conquer as a family, united, stronger. Um, so, from my heart to Vinny's heart. To Nicole and Joe's, to everybody out there, have a blessed weekend. You can listen to Freedom yeah. Rock Friday, every Friday, 5 p.m., streaming live. Vinny, tell us what you got going on Sunday again with Glenn. 
very, very special uh, holiday issue of the Sunday Spin. Me and Greno talking to two legends of the 6-4, talking outrage memories, talking tapioca convention, the legendary bands of Poway. If you're from 6-4, check it out. Two o'clock Sunday, PST. Ladies, Tony, love you guys. Thank you. And Big Daddy might even make an appearance on that. And I might sing, Joe. I love you. Guys, have a great, great weekend. Be safe. Take care of each other. Remember, live, love, and always laugh. And don't let anybody put you down, guys. Have a great night. Guys, Glenn, thank you, Stephanie, Michael, all the guys. David Andrews, we love you. Thank you so much. Have a blessed night, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Vinny, see you, buddy. Oh, Joe, I love you. Bye, guys. Love Bye, you. Guys. Happy Friday. You too. Happy Friday.